Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 14 is here, and I have to say that the collective inability of the community to comprehend the chapter for what it is, is astonishing. We have people who are blatantly putting in headcanon and filler, taking panels from this chapter and making egregious claims. Luckily for all of you, I know somebody who knows how to read and is quite competent in all Boruto lore. Yo everybody, it's your boy, King of Chaos, here to bring you Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 14, titled duty. Now, we got to start off with this amazing full panels page of Kashi and Koji. I like the red black drip. I know again, it's a car organization outfit, but it feels like it's been at least modified slightly. I don't know, maybe he's just giving off more aura now that Kashi and Koji's back within the chapter. Speaking of the chapter, we open things up with Boruto Uzumaki awakening inside of an interrogation room in Konoha, joined by Ibiki in Konoha. Kunohamaru lets him know at the very beginning two key things. One, don't bother trying to escape. And two, we've already healed your injuries. He explains that the device holding Boruto's arms is meant to withstand and stop all jutsu activation. Now, some people are taking this to mean like, okay, without jutsu, does that mean he can just enhance himself with chakra? You don't have to read that literal. Not everything that each of these characters is going to say is going to be taken verbatim. He's, he's using jutsu as a way to, you know, allude to chakra. Otherwise, Boruto would just strengthen his body. Which, by the way, I think a lot of us are forgetting. Originally in the timeline, didn't they think Boruto had Ishiki's, like, person inside of him? So why is it now that they're making devices that would essentially be worthless against someone who they think has ninja tech in his body? Because remember, the experiences between Boruto and Kaoki have been switched. So everyone thinks that he's a cyborg android from Kara who's a traitor who killed Naruto. But based off of this, I don't think Kawaki's enhancements or his tech, or I guess in this case, the tech they thought was be inside of Boruto, should actually require chakra. If they were making these in mind, specifically, then you'd know that he'd be able to break out of it. However, we get the clarification that Amato was the one who made these. So because of this, he's already factored that into account for. And with omniscience working the way it does, no one's gonna question anything about why he didn't make a device that would stop and turn off all activation of cyborg tech. Boruto asks Konohamaru about the status on all the others and the enemy. What's happened with the Shinju as well as everyone else and if they're all right. He states that the enemies have run off and there's no sign of chakra in or around the village. He also mentions the comrades that they've lost, but that the actual targets of Sarada and Himawari, as well as the Inashika Cho trio are safe. We then pan over to the hospital and I'm so happy about this because everyone's been asking, where's Sakura, where's Sakura? You got Sasuke back in the village allegedly, where is Sakura? And you have Inojin here at the hospital being healed by Sakura. Now she's blown away by the fact that he's basically been healed already. It's very difficult for her to believe that he was actually ran through as they were stating. Now the others are watching and wondering what's going on. How come if he's healed, he's not conscious? He hasn't even twitched yet. And now she explains to us that the disruption from his chakra flow has been messed up. For those of you who remember Naruto, all the times we see Naruto concentrating chakra, even back in his early, as his fight with Neji, he's able to mold and wield chakra, and a lot of it goes in the gut. I know there's different pathways and points where chakra goes through your body, but for the most part, we see it concentrating within the stomach. So for Inojin to be ripped out through there, it's essentially like him losing all of his lungs. It might take some time for him to learn how to rebreathe, or in this case, reuse his chakra. I hope it isn't gonna be some type of long-standing effects that cripples him from being a shinobi though, cause that would be crazy. Eno's looking over somberly wondering when you know what's gonna happen with her son, thinking, and I can tell by this panel, she's questioning her judgment and everything going on up to this point. Back to this point, we have Boruto now here alone with Konohamaru and Ibiki. However, due to some un you know explained means, I'm guessing it's probably just some type of projector that a model set up or whatever, or maybe even it's some type of you know, Jutsu, the mind transfer Jutsu from the Eno, you know, Eno Jean's clan, Eno's clan, the Yamanaka clan. It's possible it could be either or, but I can't really tell based off the panels. Now he lets them know from the beginning that they have a lot of questions and that this is gonna be a long talk. First off, who are those guys who attacked Konaha? Now again, we have those old crusty elders that have still been here since the beginning of time still <laughs> making everything worse and, and being present in the current story. You have Amato who's listening in, Shikamaru on the outside. And of course, you've got Ada, Damon, and Kawaki all monitoring it, with Ada watching it in live and living colors, letting everyone know that, hey, it started, Boruto's interrogation. Now Kawaki, he ain't even looking around. The little bastard that he is, he's decided he isn't gonna acknowledge her. 
and Damon. Oh, I'm starting to like Damon a lot. The Damon stocks are rising for KLC. If you love Damon, drop Damon in the comment section um, because he's he's my boy. I ain't gonna lie. He's letting Kaki know that his pack is almost smoked. It's getting lit up right now. He's rolling it. You know, he's licking it, and he's gonna <coughs> smoke that pack. And he's letting him know, hey, it ain't looking good, little bro. What you gonna do if Boruto decides to snitch on you, and then your whole goose is cooked, and then you're you're fried? Now, Kaoki doesn't take the bait. He looks at him. He ain't saying nothing, but he doubles down. He's not even done. He's gonna keep egging him on, and I love this because he knows. Kaoki knows he can't do nothing to Damon. He can't do nothing to Boruto. He's the the, the four letter word I use a lot that I can only, I only get one curse word <laughs> during certain parts of the video, y'all. So I, I gotta save it for later. Anyways, Damon goes back in and he says, I mean, there probably isn't anyone loony enough to believe that positions are flipped. Epic foreshadowing, by the way. But you lied about him killing the Okage. I wonder what everyone will think when they figure out. Now, Ada, of course, steps in the number one Kawaki Glazer. God, everyone gets on Sakura. And you know, hold up, I gotta go on a tiny rant here. All of you say Sakura is useless, Sakura is worthless, and we all hated her. What the hell has Ada contributed to the story? All she does is glaze Kawaki, and all of y'all gas her up. Oh, she's Bay. Oh, she's she's mommy. First off, she's younger than most of you weirdos, so I, I ain't gonna go on that. And she continues the glaze right now by saying, I told you not to bring that up, Damon. Quit poking at Kawaki. I, I just don't get why she gets a pass when Sarado's way more helpful than this. She ain't never, well, she hurt Naruto a little bit, but hey. Anyways, Kawaki isn't worried about anything they're saying or what I'm saying because he says it won't change a thing. No matter what Boruto says, it is still his fault that Lord Seventh disappeared. Wow, his fault? The, the actual gaslighting from this dude, he's deranged. I, I don't care what Boruto says, that this was me, Kawaki will have been in a pack by now because everyone's been humiliating him. He goes on by saying that Boruto's nothing more than a dangerous old Sutsuki who could rampage at any moment. That's his true nature. Killing him is the only option, whether it's now or later. Now, Ada, we see a panel of Ada looking here, and this is important because Ada wanted to have that conversation uh, with Kawaki. Uh, well, sorry, not Kawaki, but Boruto. She wanted to have a conversation with Boruto to see, you know, how he's been, ask him some things. So she's probably not going to let that happen. You know, I don't think in any capacity here, any of us really thought Boruto was going to be in this much danger. Kawaki continues on by stating that before we do anything, though, we need to be able to extract whatever intel he has so we're able to deal with those mysterious monsters. And now you've got Mitsuki, I guess he's on the outside of the house, just probably rehashing over his moments with Boruto, as well as his past, what he remembers to be with Kawaki, and seeing some inconsistencies. Now, cut back in, Boruto is caught in Konohamaru up to speed. Divine people, divine tree people, who possess self-consciousness. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I like how they repeat everything for us. And Boruto also continues on by saying that each one reflects the chakra of the person they devoured by ten tails and turned into a tree. For example, old man Sasuke was the base model for Hidari, who we just fought. He said, who you just fought. Yeah, right, Kono Armor was over there getting packed. Um, I've also seen one called Matsuri, whose base model is Master Moegi. Oh, and he's like, Matsuri, he's remembering his shoddy. Dang, his girl's after him now. And Boruto lets in, he confirms it. He's like, be careful. She's going to eat you. He's like, hey, yo, what? I've been trying to get her to do that for the past 16. I'm kidding. Now, this is very interesting because I don't know who the hell Amato is talking to at this point. Maybe, I mean, he's talking out loud to someone. Now, I don't know why he would sit on this interrogation. Maybe it's because of his overall knowledge. They just want to keep him in the loop so they don't have to re-explain it. But he then goes on to express his information on the Ten Tails and its intended purpose to devour an Otsutsuki, become a divine tree, put down its roots in the ground in order to suck the planet dry of life and produce a chakra fruit. He says it knows this instinctively. However, he goes on by saying that the fact that they are no longer operating on baseline impulses like simple beasts and then now they've acquired intelligence, general intellectual curiosity, it leads to seeking experience for new emotions and knowledge, namely information, and he believes that that's what they want. Now, I don't know where he is again, but everyone else talks out now. Ibiki, he ain't saying nothing because he only here for one thing. Look at that face. Ugh. How's he still alive? Now, Konohamaru questions what exactly you're trying to, like, what are they gaining by devouring Sarada, Himawari, and me? Information? What, what, what else is there? And he's like, eh, something like that. Boruto doesn't really like divulge anything more, which means it's probably a lot worse or not that bad. I mean, who knows? I would probably give them, nah, he's got to feed them bed breadcrumbs. Otherwise, they'll never want to work with him. And I think by working in this capacity of just freely giving information from the beginning, he's showing them that, hey, I can be reasoned with. 
He goes on to state that the one that's egging all of this on, the real apex predator, the number one problem for the ninja world is Jura, their leader. He's a special case who, unlike all the others, has no prototype. He's a direct incarnation of Ten Tails and the one steering the crisis we are facing now. So in clear depiction, that's him. Now everybody is getting this knowledge. Amato looks genuinely like just out of it, zonked here. The elders are, I mean, one of them even got their eyes open, so she's sleeping right now. Boruto states clearly that if we can defeat Jura, this planet would stop being in danger. Now Konohamaru is going to ask the obvious question that everyone else wants to know. How do you know these things? How are you so certain? What's going on? And he's like, answer me, Boruto. Our decision on whether or not to trust you depends on it. He's like, I got a source, but sorry, I ain't snitching. He's like, what? He's like, he asked me not to for his own safety. Now, this is something I've been thinking about. Ada said she would not look at look for Boruto in the past three years. Does that mean she won't look at what he's done in the past three years then to find out Kashin Koji? I don't know. Now, Konohamaru lets him know this is not acceptable. You believe us to believe a traitor's tale without a single ounce of evidence. And he's like, back out ya. <laughs> Most of you want me in a pack. The only reason I haven't been smoked yet is because you want my intel, right? Now, ooh, and this old man, now he ain't going for any of this glazing talk. He's, he tells him, look, don't get cocky, Boruto the Betrayer. He doesn't call him that, but I love that title. Might use it for the title of the video. He's like, whatever or whomever those monsters desire, what we of Konoha must do does not change. We will smoke, pack, and get high. <laughs> I'm kidding. That really, I mean, that's where he does look like an old man who's just a weed smoking hippie. He's like, we will defeat any hostile elements without any mercy. And that includes you, Boruto. No matter what you say, no matter what you don't, there is no chance of you leaving that room alive. Ooh, ooh just in a pack and Konoha, no. Shikamaru is stressed now. He's out there standing outside the interrogation room, breathing bullets, not saying a word. Now the old lady, she opened a little eye here. She's like, I don't sleep too much. She said, so given that, speak with caution. Based on your words, we could at least offer you a painless death. Tell us, Boruto, why ever did you lay a hand on Uzumaki Nor Naruto, Lord Seventh? And this is where we get a huge bit of information. Remember when Boruto stated before, that with the effects of the Shinjutsu, he would forget the entire concept with his conversation with Shikamaru and Boruto 2, Lu Vortex Chapter 4, 5, I believe. Editor, do your thing. You'll find one of them. That being said, he also stated that they'd had this conversation before and that he would lose. And I thought that was a mistranslation or what, but maybe he, Boruto's telling the truth. Maybe the this talk has happened already and the effects of the omnipotence causes such a big rewrite that after a certain point where people can resist it, it just completely rewrites their memories and their experiences to forget that they even talked because that's the only way it could work to defend itself. He's then having a flashback remembering the conversation about him telling Boruto that if he's not going to kill Kawaki, he's got to stay blamed for killing Naruto. He'll have to stay a fugitive. And Boruto reminds him that he wasn't even tripping on that. And he doesn't expect anything less. This was always his plan. Now Shikamaru has a little pause and it starts to wonder, wait a minute, hold up, why the heck do I trust this guy? Uh, oh, what, what basis was it? What lies with Kawaki? The word is literally blanked. Blanked out of his mind. He can't even form the concept. But he knows that for some illogical reason that he is Uzumaki Boruto. He's convinced of that. And he has a memory of deciding to believe that. Now, Boruto, he just looks up. I don't know if he's looking at him or what through the room, but I'm guessing he can sense him, which kind of makes me wonder, can Boruto really not escape from here? I, I'd be surprised. If his body being primarily Otsutsuki, even without chakra, he should be, I mean, are they just like people level without their chakra? I don't know how that works. Now, he remembers that by accepting this premise, everything else will fall into place, which lets him know that he can't let Boruto die. So now we start seeing the fifth dimensional chest that Shikamaru begins to play with all the numerous routes to save Boruto because everything else we're about to talk about all takes place within a couple minutes. But before we get that, Boruto decides to full send it. He just says it, I didn't kill him. Lord Seventh is alive, his wife too, they're both somewhere safe. And everyone's like, what? Amato's just uh, smoking a cigarette, chilling. Now he looking away, he knows, he knows already and Ada's watching. And the old lady's like, of all things you could say, they're both somewhere safe. And where is that? Where do they need to hide? And he, Boruto, skips the dookie. He cuts the cheese and says, look, I ain't saying nothing. He's like, what? You dropped such a tale like that with no proof? He's like, I didn't say it enough proof. 
I just don't intend to reveal anything to you. I haven't lied to any of you once. And wow, they do not like this answer. But Amato, we see Amato again. Like he's really starting to put the pieces together there, y'all. I think everyone's forgetting that angle. We get two cutaways of him. Previously, when Boruto states that when he's looking away, and the second time when he's just straight up just like looking off smoking. Now the OG is like, oh, so you cocky, you fancy, huh? He's like, good, good. Get him, big bro. <laughs> That's the spirit, Boruto. We finally head in the direction of a real interrogation, man. Hmm? Boruto. Now, that's my that's how Biki sounds in my head. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Now Shikamaru is like, Eno, it's me. What's up with Eno G? Asks about his update, but they skip it. He, she's like, look, cut it. You don't really care because you know he's safe. What do you want? He's like, I need you to let me talk to Boruto off the grid again. Now she says, is that an order? Hokage. Ooh. Ooh. Now he's like, Eno, what you on, girl? What you chilling? He's like, look, I've told you this. We've been breaking the rules. I, I can't help you with this. Our conversation requires us to report this. Even now, we're violating so many rules. Do you not care? And he's like, look, I told you it's a top secret mission. You're the only one I can ask. And she tells him straight up, I'm worried about you, man. Are you sure you're making the right decision? How do you know you can trust him? What, what, what's going on that makes you so confident you can champion Boruto all of a sudden? Because for the past couple years, as far as she's concerned, he's wanted her dead too. And everything changes when he comes to town. So I get Eno's apprehension. And so does he. He even says he understands her distrust, but to trust him that he needs her help. Asking as a friend, not as Okage. Now she tells him, she looks down and pauses for a second and looks at Eno Jean. And she says, cool your head, Shikamaru. This can't keep happening. It needs to stop. I'm sorry, but I can't do this anymore. And he calls out to her, hoping she'll top. But she, man, Eno really cut him off here. The Eno she could show trio ain't as solid as we thought. I can't believe, I really thought that he would be able to convince Eno to like just follow his orders. But I respect her for standing on her own. She got more important things to worry about their kid anyways. Speaking of more important things, Boruto's currently in a bad position right now because Ibiki tells him straight up what's about to happen. He says, if Lord Seventh is safe, tell us where he is. If you can't, your claim isn't going to fly and you'll be dis... You'll die disgraced as a Hokage killing traitor. Now, Boruto, he ain't hearing none of that. He's like, I ain't saying nothing. Like, it's like he almost straight up did not hear a beak. He considers him an NPC. What are they calling him now? Ninja 01347. <laughs> Shout out to Kidomaki and uh, Naruto Explain. Now, he slams Boruto's face on the desk. And this is what the craziest feat we've seen in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Besides Jura, that's the only time we've seen Boruto take damage. His face is bloodied it looks like he's bleeding from his mouth and his nose and he tells him straight up look bro i've been waiting to get my hands on you these last three years for everything you've done to for what you did to naruto i've been wanting to pummel you and beat you like a, like a drum bum ba dum bum bum that boom 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 bass what y'all know about that that's Nicki minaj reference now boruto pauses for a second he looks at him he's like dang it must be nice to have so much free time. And boom, another right hook. Now, Shikamaru's watching this, and he and Boruto's getting, just getting wailed on. He's like, nice glares. Let's see how long that lasts. But Ibiki is interrupted by Shikamaru. He's like, Ibiki, it ain't gonna work. He isn't the type to break under pain. Let's use Venom. Summon Mitsuki. Now, Konohamaru is thinking, what the hell are you doing, bro? Mitsuki wants him in a immediate pack. Forget interrogating or torture. Mitsuki's just gonna smoke him, which is the actual right answer if you're trying to deal with the threat. I know, Shinju, blah, 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 but I'm just saying, if Boruto was really this much of a threat, he should have been packed. Now, Shikamaru tells him not to worry because he will take the fall and to calm him now. Ada watching the whole time. And the only thing she tells Kawaki is that it doesn't look like Boruto's gonna snitch. She doesn't mention the fact that Mitsuki's being sent there now. He's like, what? He's like, he seems to be trying to protect your standing in Konoha. And then this little cuck Kawaki just looks over. And even Damon's like, what the heck? Why would he do that? I don't get the guy. And I hope Kawaki feels like crap. I really hope he gets every bad thing happens. I hope that Ishiki is alive, comes back, possesses his body, so then Boruto has to kill him. Like, Kawaki is the worst character in this story. And I don't care what he does, he will be irredeemable. Speaking of irredeemable, we now have Mitsuki currently going in to help Boruto's interrogation, but he's stopped by Konohamaru. Konohamaru reminds him, sorry, <laughs> I keep mixing them up. I, I don't know if it's the paneling or designs or whatever, but Shikamaru reminds him, hey, we're Shinobi. The mission comes first. You must keep your emotions control and do your duty. And then Mitsuki doesn't say a word after he says, understand. Now he goes in there, slides in like a snake, looking at Boruto, mean mugging, and Konohamaru's already watching him. Boruto's beaten and bloodied. 
Again, that table is tough. And so is Ibiki. I mean, apparently Ibiki's got more power than <laughs> Kawaki. Just saying. Kawaki is what? Tuning level? Tuning torturer level? Now, Konohamaru warns him from the beginning, bro. Calm down. There's a chance he has intel that's critical to our safety. Do not kill him. Our purpose is information. Do you understand? And Miski don't say a word to him because he already knows the sun side. He's like, hey, Boruto <laughs> cracks that smile. He says, hey, Mitsuki, you still idiotically searching for your son? And that is when Mitsuki loses it. Or at least as far as they're concerned, he loses it uh, because he charges at Boruto immediately. No warning. Pins up against the wall. He's like, is that all you have to say, you ungrateful traitor? Now, Ibiki's trying to grab him. Tell him, calm down. Chill. Now, we see this as a threat on Boruto's life, but if Mitsuki wanted him dead, a snake would have already been through him. <laughs> Pause. However, we see something that's even more critical than this. Mitsuki utilizing the snake through Boruto's clothing and unlocks his handcuffs, warning him that his items are being guarded by two ninja in the security office on the West Wing. Now, Ibiki and Konohamaru are immediately trying to get a hold of the situation. And Boruto comes up, puts his fingers up, and has the flying Raijin symbol ready. And Ibiki immediately notices that he's there. He's like, just to be clear, I don't see any of you as foes. I'm even okay with sharing intel as needed, which I'll decide. And how you use it will be entirely up to you. And he leaves. Flying Raijin now, he's like, no way he slipped the cuffs. He's like, ugh, Ibiki pissed off. I thought they were supposed to be resistant even to high impact. That dang bastard Amato foisting such junk on us. Ooh, that's a good word, foisting. He, and then Konohamaru, he's smart. He's a smart ninja. He's like, Mitsuki had to unlock those, right? He's like, nah, that's not a possibility. Only Ibiki, Lord Eighth, and I know the fourth code. Sorry, yeah, Ibiki, I, and Lord Eighth know the four-digit code. And Mitsuki has no reason to help Boruto. But then we get a nice little cutaway panel from when Mitsuki was being stopped by Shikamaru. He puts his hand on him, and we see that he passed in the digit code. And I guess maybe through his conversation with Boruto, you know, Mitsuki's now come to this assertion he has to be on his side. Or maybe Shikamaru just has that much pull with Mitsuki? No, it's got to be a combination of the fact that he knew that they had a conversation and was hoping that Mitsuki could see the truth for what he could. Now, Boruto flashes back in there, grabs his gear, lets uh, the random Chunin know, hey, it ain't that big of a deal. Um, don't feel bad. I, I, I gotta get this. However, <laughs> and I mean, he, he teleports out before they can stop him. And to be honest, I don't know why they'd even bother like protecting that stuff. I would have buried it or broken it just out of disrespect. I don't know. They'd be such a Boruto the Betrayer. Now, Miski's like, I'm so sorry, Master Konohamaru. I lost my cool and blew it. And he's like, it's understandable. Look, Lord Eighth sanctioned this plan, so don't beat yourself up. He's like, what an absolute blunder. You've wasted our one opportunity to bring him down. And he tells me, my apologies, I'll launch a manhunt. And he now, the elders warn Shikamaru that the Damios will be quite unhappy about this and that there will be lasting consequences from this effect. So we might be seeing someone else taking over as Okage. Maybe Shikamaru can't do what he wants to in that role and this will give him a chance to help. He hasn't officially taken the title. If you put someone like, like uh, Konohamaru up there who's been groomed to be the next Okage, he might have something. Now we're cut away to the final chapters of the chapter, the final pages, and Shikamaru's smoking inside the... <laughs> Smoke inside the office in Konoha, the Hokage office of all places. Remember, he got on a model for smoking on the rooftop. Uh, and he's just chilling inside there. And Sarada and Sumire are rushing in trying to talk. To, I just want to talk to him. He's like, bro, I just got five minutes to hit this smoke. Y'all can't let me roll up real quick. What do you want? Let him in. And then now Sarada, she comes in dressing him properly. Lord Eighth, what was the result of Boruto's interrogation? And all he does is pause and say he escaped. And she's like, huh? Because even she don't believe that. Now, we get a transmission coming in from Konkuro from the Hidden Sand Village, letting him know that, hey, Gar has been packed and his son is done too. Both of them are currently under the effects of the tree affliction. So it looks like they're going to need the help of Konoha in order to lend him a hand. That being said, this is giving him from, like, you know, Naruto going to save Gara vibes off. Maybe this truly is the retelling, in which case, we should all know that the Shinju aren't the final threat. But speaking of the Shinji, we are now introduced to the next one, Ryu. He's been awakened by Jura, greeted by Matsuri, Bugs Clone, and of course, Hidari, who is now fully recovered as well. So, what do all of you think of Borzo 2 Blue Vortex? I'm not gonna lie, I think the chapter was amazing. I think we got a lot of information on things we wanted, and I think Boruto's getting more and more opportunities to prove that he's not a bad guy. He didn't kill anyone. He didn't hurt anyone. And with this, and his ability to share open information that they will be able to confirm, 
it's giving him a position to actually get back into the, the Konoha's good graces. I'm not saying we're gonna see Boruto redeemed in the next 10 chapters, but I'm saying in the next 25, I can slowly see the narrative easily shifting in his favor. But if you want more information on Boruto and his character and why he's misunderstood, you should probably check out the video up above where I explain Boruto, his goals, his character, and just so you know, YouTube thinks you should watch it, and so do I.